I, our story is actually not dissimilar to the case study that you used just before. Um, we had a lot of problems breastfeeding in the hospital and he was diagnosed with a tongue tie and, and it was cut and then he was diagnosed with reflux but we decided not to medicate and then all of a sudden he grew out of it and finally we had success with, with breastfeeding. Um, I found in the health system that there was, I knew nothing about breastfeeding until I fell pregnant and then I was amazed at all the ben benefits of breastfeeding so that was when I became quite passionate about wanting to breastfeed him. But there was so much taught to me about the benefits of breastfeeding but nothing about how to do it. And I found in the hospital um, he was being shoved at my breast but then they would walk out. So no one actually looked at how he latched. They just, when he didn't latch, they looked in his mouth and said he had a tongue tie. So I'm finding what you're saying so interesting because it's a very different way of looking at what we went through and, and a way that it, it really makes sense as well, you know. So, yeah, just want to say that. Thank you. Yes. So you're saying that the research says that there's no real benefit to, like, lip ties and then potentially posterior ties being released. Does that, is that specific to breastfeeding? Because I know there's a whole lot of research around like sleep apnea and releasing ties, which obviously has nothing to do with breastfeeding. Um. Yes, now this is a really, a really good question. So let's start with the upper lip tie and indeed buckle ties. It's really clear that um, there's no place for phrenotomy under the upper lip or indeed of buccal ties. The risk is that we get scarring and worsened gaps between the teeth. Um, the frenulum under the upper lip recedes as the baby grows into childhood. There's very occasionally cases where there's a fleshy frenulum in later childhood, way after the um, adult teeth have come through and a decision might be made to incise that it typically might not work but but that's way down the track there's no role at all for incision of a labial frenulum because there's absolutely no benefit to breastfeeding because the upper lip shouldn't be visible and is not involved actually in the breastfeeding other than as part of a big face part of a big face breast berry which we'll talk about um, so I think that's lip tie um, now, again, um, we had um, Mary Renfrew's evidence up to 2005. From 2005, there's been a lot of studies which claim to show the benefits of phrenotomy for tongue tie. But from 2005, um, actually there's been incredible confusion between is it a classic tongue tie or is it a posterior tongue tie? And you'll notice these days, because it's being said behind every anterior tongue tie there's a posterior tongue tie, the providers and promoters of this surgery will actually just refer to tongue tie. And this is reflected in the literature. Now, oh, my sweetheart, the only worry I have is that I use this Timo with newborns and so I try to keep Timo fairly away from um, little fingers as I can. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so, um, so all the research from 2005 has been confused. And what's happening is that the research is under, the research basically shows you do your systematic reviews, your Cochrane reviews, they're showing basically very little effect for phrenotomies, no reliable effects. But what's happening is that um, the classic tongue ties are being merged into this very poorly defined diagnosis of a posterior tongue tie which of course we're arguing is, is actually just a normal connective tissue under the tongue. And so we're underestimating the effects of phrenotomy for a classic tongue tie and you know overestimating the effects for a posterior tongue tie. We've got the problem of, of very very poor quality research. Now the classic poor quality research is of providers of surgery who do have financial benefits in this going back through their, their their charts we know that's very 
prone to bias or indeed just pre and post questionnaires which again are very prone to um, um, bias in terms of interpretation. If any of you are um, a little bit inclined to, to get into the research, on my personal website PamelaDouglas.com I have all my publications um, and there's one in there that's called Making Sense of Studies that claim the benefits of phrenotomy in the absence of a classic tongue tie that in a nerdy kind of way looks at all the flaws in the research that's being bandied around in the English speaking world internationally to promote um, phrenotomies, particularly with laser of course. Um, um, it's called Making Sense Of, if you just remember that when you look all my studies um, are up there, so you'll just go down through all the PDFs. Um, so, um, now the issue of the sleep apnea. This is again um, very methodologically poor work. So what's been noticed, and this is the case, is that breastfeeding actually improves orthodontic outcomes. However, providers of surgery are assuming that therefore their phrenotomies will improve orthodontic outcomes. Now I can say this to you and it sounds you know, really obvious, but unfortunately around the English speaking world where the incidence of phrenotomies in epidemic proportions, um, this is not obvious to health professionals. Um, so there's also um, real misconceptions about sleep apnea and uh, palates going up high and causing sleep apnea. There's, there's unfortunately um, all sorts of misunderstandings being um, propagated as research-based facts at the moment. Um, and it all has its, it all has its roots in, in a faulty understanding of how babies actually suckle at the breast.